Hello everyone. I'm Mary Sanrata, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the relation between the cross power spectral density and the cross correlation. In the previous lectures, we have seen about what is cross correlation and what is cross power spectral density. In today's lecture, we are going to derive the relation between the cross power spectral density as well as the cross correlation function. So before going to that, first we we'll revise what is power spectral density and what is the definition of the cross power spectral density, what is autocorrelation and then cross correlation. After that, we will go with the relation between the cross power spectral density and the cross correlation. Now, what is power spectral density? A power spectral density or it is also called as what power density spectrum that is nothing but it is describes the distribution of average power with respect to the frequency that is nothing but what the power spectral density or the power density spectrum it means how the power how the average power of a signal has been distributed with respect to the frequency is nothing but the power spectral density for example, the same concept we can apply to a random process also. So, what is a random process? A random process is a function of both the random variable as well as the time function. That is nothing but what? The random process, nothing but what? X of S comma T here. S represents the sample space elements. As the random variable is a function of the sample space elements. So, the random process is a function of both the random variable as well as a time function that is nothing but random process the other name for random process is stochastic process also now the power spectral density of a random process x of s comma t so instead of writing x of x comma t simply you can represent by x of t so the power spectral density of a random process x of t has been represented by the symbol s x s of omega here what is S represents the spectral density and what is omega indicates here the angular frequency 2 pi f and here x x indicates the random process x of t. So the symbol of the power spectral density of a random process x of t has been denoted by S x s of omega because as the name is saying that power spectral density here power is nothing but what we are calculating the power and spectral is nothing but what is the frequency domain the frequency components and density is nothing but what distributed how the power has been distributed with respect to the frequency components is called as what power spectral density and the other name for power spectral density is nothing but power density spectrum also so it has been given by limit t tends to infinity expectation of xt of omega into xt star of omega by 2t or else you can write down this as limit t tends to infinity expectation of xt star of omega into xt of omega by 2t. So this expression already we have derived in the previous lecture. So from that you can say that the power spectral density of a random process S x of omega is equals to limit t tends to infinity expectation. Here what is expectation indicates nothing but it is the represents a statistical average. So the statistical average of what x t of omega. What is x t of omega? It is nothing but Fourier transform of the random process x of t over the interval minus t comma t and what is x star of omega indicates it represents complex complex conjugate here is the star symbol indicates what the complex conjugate the complex conjugate of the Fourier transform of the random process x of t over the interval minus t comma t and here 2t represents the entire duration of the random process from minus t to t. So this is expression for the power spectral density of a random process x of t which has been derived in the previous lecture. And similar case what is cross power spectral density. The cross power spectral density is also represents the distribution of the average power with respect to the frequency components. It means how the power 
have been distributed with respect to the frequency where the difference between the power spectral density and the cross power spectral density is the power spectral density related to a single random signal a single random process x of t whereas the cross power spectral density represents the distribution of power with respect to what two random signals x of t and y of t only there is a difference between the power spectral density and the cross power spectral density now if you consider x of t and y of t two random process let us consider these two are random process random process nothing but already has seen is a function of what both random variable and time here is indicates the sample space elements and the random variable is a function of the sample space elements that is nothing but what random process now the cross power spectral density of the random process x of t and y of t has been denoted by the symbol s x y of omega so here s yes, represents a spectrum and here x y represents a, the two random process x of t and y of t and here the omega represents a frequency component nothing but the angular frequency 2 pi f is equal to what limit t tends to infinity expectation here the expectation nothing but the statistical average so the expectation of x t star of omega here represents what x is star of omega into y t of omega so what is x is star of omega indicates the fourier transform of the random process x of t over the interval minus t comma t and here star indicates the complex conjugate and here y t of omega represents what the fourier transform of the random process y of t over the interval minus t comma t by 2t and here 2t represents the entire duration of the two random process over the interval minus t comma t t minus of minus a represents what 2t therefore this is a cross power spectral density of two random process x of t and y of t so this expression is already derived in the previous picture so after that we will just revise the topic of correlation so what is correlation correlation co is nothing but what between two relation is nothing but what the similarity therefore what is the correlation the correlation function measures the similarity between two components so there may be two variables or there may be two signals or there may be two random process two random variables whatever it may be it will measure the similarity between co is nothing but two and here relation nothing but what similarity so it measures the similarity between two random signals how they have the similar values that is nothing but what correlation so depending upon the type of signals you are having auto correlation and cross correlation now what is auto correlation auto correlation nothing but what is also correlation only measuring the similarity only but it measures the similarity of what the signal with the delay copy of itself only that is nothing but what x of t and x of t plus or minus tau it measures the similarity between the same signal only and this is a given signal and it is a delayed version of the given signal therefore what is auto correlation auto correlation is also correlation only measuring the similarity only but it will measure what two quantities the first quality is what the given signal and what is the second quantity here the delayed version of the given signal that is nothing but what auto correlation now the same concept we are applying to the random process also so if you take a random process x of t then the auto correlation function of the random process x of t has been represented by the symbol r x s of t comma t plus tau here what is r indicates r means what relation and here what is x indicates the random process x of t and t is a function of time t is a time function and tau is a difference of those two times so r x s of t comma t plus tau is equal to what expectation so here expectation is nothing but what finding the statistical average 
the other name for expectation nothing but mean statistical average also so here the expectation of or the statistical average of the product of those two quantities product of those two quantities why you are taking expectation because you are taking the random process that's why here we are taking what expectation we are calculating the statistical average so the statistical average of the product of two quantity what is the first quantity the given signal or the given random process x of t and what is the second quantity here the delayed version of the random process x of t so this is nothing but auto correlation this all we have derived in the last lecture and next coming to the cross correlation so the cross correlation is also again what correlation correlation nothing but one missing the similarity only both will auto correlation as well as cross correlation they will measure the similarity between two quantities but what is the difference here and here the auto correlation measure the similarity between the first quantity is what signal and second quantity is what the delayed version of the given signal itself whereas the cross correlation is nothing but measuring the similarity of one signal this is a first quantity and what about the second quantity you are taking another signal you are taking a second signal y of t and you are delaying that signal and then you are calculating measuring the between those two quantities that is nothing but what cross correlation so for example consider two random process x of t and y of t so these two are the two random process x of t and y of t now we want to measure the similarity between the first random process and the second random process then how do you denote the cross correlation r here r represents what relation and here x y x represents the first random process nothing but the first quantity and y represents the second random process nothing but the second quantity and these two are defined at two quantities at two time instants t comma t plus tau is equals to what expectation of there is nothing but the statistical average of so x of t nothing but the first random process x of t nothing but the first quantity and the delayed signal of the second signal i think what is second signal or second here random process is y of t and what is delayed version y of t plus tau here tau may be positive or negative so y of t plus tau then nothing but what cross correlation therefore cross correlation nothing but there is a correlation or in measuring the similarity between a signal or a random process x of t with delayed copy of another random process x of t that is the definition of the cross correlation now we have seen the definition of the cross perspective density as well as we have seen the definition of the cross correlation now let us derive the relation between the cross perspective density and the cross correlation now what is a relation between these two nothing but for example if i consider x of t and y of t are two random process now the relation is to nothing but what the cross power spectral density is nothing but what it is a fourier transform the fourier transform of time average of cross correlation function so what is the cross correlation function all you have seen of two random process r x y of t comma t plus tau after that what they are given the fourier transform of the time average the time average nothing but what that has been represented by a of so in the previous lecture so you have seen what is the time average what is the time average formula so it's nothing but the time average of any function is nothing but what limit t tends to infinity integration minus t to t so that function into what dt so limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integration minus t to t whatever the function is there that function to dt is nothing but what time average in the previous lectures you have seen the statistical average nothing but expectation e of and similarly you have seen the time average which has been denoted by a of so what is the relation they are given the time average of cross correlation function the time average of the cross correlation function and is fourier transform nothing but eft of 
the Fourier transform is equals to what? So is equals to the cross power spectral density of two random process x of t and y of t. So what is the cross power spectral density of the two random process x of t and y of t? That is nothing but yes x y of omega. So what is the relation between these two? The cross is nothing but cross power spectral density and it is nothing but the cross correlation function. So the relation, the Fourier transform of the time average of the cross correlation of two random process is equal to the, the cross power spectral density of the two random process. This gives the relation between the cross PSD and cross correlation. And similarly, vice versa. What does it mean? Vice versa means what? The inverse Fourier transform of the cross power spectral density is equal to the time average of the cross correlation of those two random process Rxy, x of t and y of t. Time average of Rxy of t comma t plus 2. So Fourier transform of time average of cross correlation gives the cross power spectral density and vice versa means the inverse Fourier transform of the cross power spectral density gives the time average of the cross correlation function. So this is the relation between the cross correlation as well as the cross power spectral density. For example, if you consider x of t and y of t are two random process, let us write down the formula now. Then what is s x y of omega, the power cross power spectral density? Nothing but Fourier transform of the time average of the cross correlation function r x y of t comma t plus tau. The so, equals to what? What is the Fourier transform of the formula? Nothing but what? Integration minus infinity to infinity. So a of the Fourier transform any function nothing but that function into e power minus j omega tau d tau. So that is nothing but what? The power spectral density, the cross power spectral nothing but what? Fourier transform of time average of the cross correlation function. What is the Fourier transform formula? Integration minus infinity, what are the function? That function into e power minus a omega tau d tau. And similarly, if uh, what is uh, vice versa, nothing but the time average of cross correlation function of those two random process is equal to what? Inverse Fourier transform of the cross power spectral density. We know that the Fourier transform of x of t is x of omega. The Fourier transform of x of t is x of omega. And similarly, the inverse Fourier transform of x of omega is nothing but x of t. Now, what is the inverse Fourier transform formula here? 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity. Yes, x y of omega into e power j omega tau d omega. So, what is inverse Fourier transform of x of omega formula? 1 by 2 pi integration minus 7 to d x of omega into e power j omega t d t. In place of t, I replaced by tau here. So, e power j omega tau d omega. So, this is a relation between the cross PSD as well as a cross correlation function. Now let us consider one more condition. These two random process x of t and y of t are wide sense stationary random process. Let us consider these two random process x of t and y of t are jointly wide sense stationary random process. So what do you mean by wide sense stationary random process? First of all, what is stationary random process? A stationary random process is said to be stationary if it is constant with respect to the time, it is nothing but what stationary random process. And what is wide sense stationary random process? If it satisfies at least one of the two conditions. What are the two conditions? The first condition should be the mean should be constant, the mean of the random process should be constant. And second condition is the correlation function should be a function of 
only the time difference tau only so these are the two conditions for the white sense stationary random process this already have discussed in the previous lectures so now we are considering that x of t and y of t are white sense stationary random process then what is the condition the mean is constant what is the mean of the random process x of t nothing but e of x of t nothing but x bar so it is not a function of t it is a constant whatever the value of t but the mean is constant here and similarly the mean of the second random process is also constant it should not be a function of t so this is the first condition and similarly the correlation function should be a function of only the time difference only so what is uh, here the first signal is what x of t and second one is what y of t plus tau then what is cross correlation function rx y of t comma t plus tau then this cross correlation function so that is nothing but what expectation of x of t into y of t plus tau so it is nothing but what the cross correlation function rx y of t plus tau so what is the condition here for a stationary random process it should not depend upon t it should depend only the time difference between these two quantities what is the time difference here rx y of t plus tau minus nothing but what tau so this is a condition for a wide sense stationary random process now what you can think that in the first case i can think to random process x of t in the second case you can think that these two random processes are white sense stationary random process then what is the relation you can write down here you can write down the relation for this is so what is uh, if x of t and y of t are white sense stationary then what is the time average of the cross correlation function r x y of t plus tau is nothing but r x y of t comma t plus tau only why because the time average is nothing but it is a function of t it is average with respect to the time variable t so it is uh, it is differentiate is integrating with respect to the variable t the time average so when it because for white sense stationary function it is not depending upon t so it is a constant with respect to t so the average of any constant is the constant itself therefore the time average of the cross correlation of these two random process is nothing but r x y of t comma t plus so this is for what white sense stationary random process now what is the relation you can write down here the fourier transform of the cross correlation function previously r x y of t comma t plus tau is nothing but now if it is white sense stationary you can write down only the time difference the time difference between these two t plus tau minus t nothing but what tau only therefore the fourier transform of the cross correlation of two white sense stationary random process x of t and y of t is equals to the cross power spectral density s x y of omega what is the formula here integration minus one infinity what is the fourier transform formula so r x y of tau into e power minus j omega tau d tau and vice versa so similarly the inverse fourier transform of the cross power spectral density of the two random process is equal to what the cross correlation function since the constant they are white sense stationary random process they are function of only the time difference only then what is the formula here 1 by 2 pi what is inverse fourier transform of sxy of omega formula 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity yes xy of omega into e power j omega tau d omega so this is nothing but what the inverse fourier transform of the cross power spectral density this is in the case of what white sense stationary random process like that you can write down the relation between the cross psd and the cross correlation let us derive how do you get this relation okay now what is the cross power spectral density of two random process formula is equals to limit t tends to infinity expectation of xt star of omega into 
yt of omega by 2t. So, this is a cross PSD, the cross power spectral density formula. Now, what is xt of omega? So, xt of omega is nothing but what? Fourier transform of xt of t. Because the Fourier transform of x of t is x of omega. And similarly, in the Fourier transform of xt of t, nothing but xt of omega. Now, what is x t of t? x t of t is nothing but what? It is a portion of the random process x of t over the interval minus t to t. And it is 0 otherwise. Therefore, how could I don't hear what is the Fourier transform formula? Integration minus infinity x t of t into e power minus j omega t dt. That is equal to what? What is x t of t? It is a portion of the random process x of t. So, x of t which for what times for what interval when t is minus t to t. Therefore, replace this minus infinity and infinity by what? Minus t and plus t. So, in this interval what is x t of t? Then nothing but x of t. So, replace this x t of t by x of t into e power minus j omega t dt. So, this is nothing but what? x t of omega. Now, in place of t, what will I do is, I am taking a variable t1. So, replace wherever t is there, you just replace t by t1 here. Then, what do you obtain here? x of t1 into e power minus j omega t1 dt1. So, this is x t of omega. But what I want here, I want the complex conjugate of x t of omega. Therefore, so what is x t star of omega is equals to what? Integration minus t to t x star of t1. You are considering that the random process is a real random process. Therefore, x star of t, the complex conjugate of any real value, nothing but the function itself. Therefore, what is x star of t1? That nothing but what? x of t1 only. And what is the complex conjugate of e power minus j omega t1? That nothing but what? e power plus j omega t1 into what? dt1. Let us consider this is equation 1 and it is equation 2. Now, we have to write down yt of omega. Now, what is yt of omega? So, yt of omega is nothing but the Fourier transform of the random process y of t over the interval minus t comma t. Now, what is the Fourier transform formula? Integration minus infinity infinity yt of t into e power minus j omega t dt. <coughs> now, what is... <coughs> Now, what is yt of t? So, yt of t is equals to nothing but is a portion of the random process y of t over the interval minus t comma t and 0 otherwise. So, what is yt of t? It is a portion of the random process y of t over the which interval? In the interval minus t to t. Therefore, what is yt of t? Nothing but it is nothing but y of t only. yt of t equals y of t. For what values of t when t is minus t to t. So, replace this minus infinity and infinity by minus t and t. So, into e power minus j omega t dt. So, it is nothing but what? The Fourier transform of the random process yt of t. So, let us replace this t1 by t2. So, I am replacing wherever t is there. You just replace t by t2 here. So, let us say this is equation 3. Now, from equation 1. So, what is equation 1 here? Sxy of omega equals to what? Limit t tends to infinity expectation of x e star of omega by t of omega by 2t. So, substitute x e star of omega from equation 2 and substitute y t of omega from equation 3. Then, you can write down the cross power spectral density Yes, x y of omega is equals to limit t tends to infinity. So, 1 by 2 t. So, expectation of x t star of omega. So, from equation 2, what is x t star of omega? Integration minus t to t x of t1 into e power j omega t1 dt1. 
therefore integration minus t to t x of t1 into p power minus j omega p1 dt1. So, this is the first function and next what you have in into yt of omega you have in. So, you may take in infinity 1 by 2t into expectation of a replace x is of omega y from equation 2 and I have replaced now yt of omega y equation 3. Then what can I write down here? What is equation 3? Integration minus t to t y of t2 into e power minus j omega t2 dt2. Sorry here. So what is the equation here? x of t1 into e power j omega t1. So it is plus. So I don't here because it is a complex conjugate. Now, so from this sxy of omega is equals to s x y of omega equals to limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t. Next what you have here? You can write and this as what? Integration minus t to t. Integration minus t to t. Expectation of x of t1 into y of t2 because the statistical average is applied to the random process only. Here x of t1 y of t2 is the random process. So, so write down this statistical average as what? Integration minus t to t. Integration minus t to t. Expectation of only write down the random process. So write down here over the random process x of t1 and y of t2 are the two random process. Remaining components keep it outside. So e power minus j omega. No, this is not minus having e power j omega t1. So e power j omega t1 into e power minus j omega t2. Next into what you have here dt1 into dt2. But equals to limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integration minus t to t. Now what is our statistical average or the expectation of product of two random process? Nothing but what? It's nothing but the cross correlation only. What is the cross correlation of two random process? Nothing. There is nothing but what? The statistical average of product of two random process. Therefore, this has been represented by the cross correlation. Correlation nothing but represented by R. Cross is nothing but here having two different random processes. Write down here X, Y. And what are the two instances here? Time instance. At the time instance T1 and T2. Into what you having here? Take E power J omega common in between these two components. Then what you can obtain here? E power J omega into T1 minus T2 into dt1 into dt2. Okay, let us say this is equation 4. Now, what you have to prove that the Fourier transform of the time average of the cross correlation is equal to the cross power spectral density or else the inverse Fourier transform of the inverse Fourier transform of the cross power spectral density of the two random process should be equal to what? That should be equal to the time average of the cross correlation function of the two random process. This I have to prove now. You have to prove the relation between these two. Now, if I have to prove this, first you consider the LHS part. So, what is the LHS part here? The inverse Fourier transform of S x y of omega. So, what is inverse Fourier transform formula? 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity s x y of omega into e power j omega tau d omega. Let us say this is equation 5. Now already we have written the expression for the first function as x y of omega from equation 4. Now we substitute this s x y of omega from equation 4 the equation 5. Then what can you obtain here? 1 by 2 pi integration minus input infinity. What is equation 4 here? S x y of omega. So limit t tends infinity 1 by 2t integration minus t to t integration minus t to t r x y of t1 comma t2 into e power j omega t1 minus t2 
dt1 dt2 now you place that one then you can write on this as limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integration minus t to t so into r x y of t1 comma t2 into what you have in there e power j omega into t1 minus t2 into dt1 dt2 so this is nothing but this entire limit from equation 4 up to this now into what you have here e power j omega tau d omega so e power j omega tau d omega so that equals to we can rewrite on this equation as we just interchange the integrals then limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integration minus t to t rxy of t1 comma t2 so write down this here then you can write down here 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity then you are having e power j omega t1 minus t2 here from this quantity and this quantity you just take the term, common term as e power j omega then what can you obtain here e power j omega into t1 minus t2 plus tau so directly I am writing here t1 minus t2 plus tau into what you have here d omega into dt1 dt2 now let us write down we will recall the relation of Fourier transform so what is a Fourier transform of 1 that is nothing but what what is a Fourier transform of del of t the Fourier transform of the inverse function del of t equals to what 1 the Fourier transform of del of t is equals to 1 and similarly the inverse Fourier transform of 1 is equals to what the inverse function so the inverse Fourier transform of 1 is nothing but the impulse function so what is inverse Fourier transform of 1 nothing but is a formula inverse Fourier transform formula 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity in place of x of omega now we have 1 so 1 into e power j omega t into d omega so this is nothing but what inverse Fourier transform of 1 is equals to 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity 1 into e power j omega t d omega now what is inverse Fourier transform of 1 and I think but what the inverse function del of t now from this equation you just compare here now what is 1 by 2 pi 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity 1 into what you have in here e power j omega into t1 minus t2 plus tau d omega so write down here e power j omega into you are having t1 minus t2 plus tau into e power j omega tau d omega now in place of t in place of t what do you have now you are having t1 minus t2 plus tau if you have t you are getting del of t now in place of t what do you have here t1 minus t2 plus tau then what is inverse Fourier transfer nothing but del of it is also impulse only but in place of t now we have t1 minus t2 plus tau therefore you just replace this 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity infinity e power j omega t1 minus t2 plus tau into d omega nothing but is inverse Fourier transform of 1 but in place of t you are having t1 minus t2 plus tau the inverse Fourier transform of 1 is impulse so in place of del of t what do you get here del of t1 minus t2 plus tau now let us write down here then what do I write down here the inverse LHS what do I have here inverse Fourier transform of SXY of omega is equals to what limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integration minus t to t then you are having rxy of t1 comma t2 into what you have here rxy of t1 comma t2 
Now the inverse Fourier transform one is impulse function. So replace in place of T by T1 minus T2 plus tau. Then what can you obtain here? Del of T1 minus T2 plus tau into what you have here? DT1 into DT2. Now we know the definition of the impulse function. So how do you define the impulse function, unit impulse function? So yeah, it is a unit impulse function. Then how do you define the unit impulse? Unit nothing but the magnitude is 1. It's nothing but unity. So how do you define the unit impulse function? The unit impulse function, the law of t has been defined by it equals to 1. At what value of t? Only at the origin. And it is 0 for the values of t. That is nothing but what you could draw on the graph. I am taking the x-axis t. In the y-axis the unit impulse function. So this is t value. Only at t equals 0 it is 1. Only at this one it is I mean, it is 1. For remaining values it is nothing but what? 0. So this is the definition of the unit inverse function. And now in place of t what I have here? t1 minus t2 plus tau. So in place of t what I am having here? Del of t1 minus t2 plus tau. So it's nothing but what? For what values of t2? It is 1. For what values of t2? When t2 equals to t1 plus tau. And 0 for other values of t2. In terms of t2 I am calculating here. Only at 0. This function I have to get as 0. So when do you get this uh, function as uh, 0? So when do you get this function as 0? So this function is 0 when t1 minus t2 plus tau is equals to 0. t1 minus t2 plus tau equals to 0. So from this what is t2 is equals to t1 plus tau. Therefore this rel of t1 minus t2 plus tau is equals to 1. For what values of t2? When t2 equals to t1 plus tau. For other value of t2 it is 0. Now what can I do here? The inverse Fourier transform of S x y of omega is equal to what? Limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t. So here this is t1 equals to minus t2t and this is t2 equals to minus t2t. Now for what values of t2 it is 1 when t2 equals to t1 plus t2. So replace t2 by what? t1 plus tau. And this is 1. For what value of t2 only yet in this interval entire interval minus t2 t. Only when t2 equals to 0 it is 1. For other value it is 0. Therefore you can render this as 1 only when t2 equals t1 plus tau. So into dt 1. So it is nothing but what? It is a time average formula. So a of because what is the time average formula? a of any function nothing but Limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t in dash minus t2t that function into dt. Now, so this is a time average form. Time average of what? Rxy of t1 comma t1 plus tau. Now replace uh, this t1 by t. Then what can you obtain here? Rxy of t comma t plus tau. So this is nothing but what? The inverse for your transform of the cross power spectral density. Therefore, from this, what can you prove? You can prove that the inverse Fourier transform of the cross power spectral density of two random process x of t and y of t is equal to the, the time average of the cross correlation between two random process x of t and y of t. And in the similar manner, the Fourier transform of the time average of the cross correlation between Two random process is equal to what? The cross power spectral density. Like that, you can derive the relation between the cross power spectral density and the cross correlation function. What is the relation states that? The relation states that the Fourier transform of the time average of the cross correlation function is equal to the cross PSD, or else the inverse Fourier transform of the cross PSD is equal to the time average of the cross correlation function thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates